So today I'll be talking about Sidekick. After two years of development and yeah, two and a half, three, no, three years, three years, <laughs> three years ago we had the idea to make uh, a Sidekick. I'll be talking about what that is, why that is, and how we've decided to to implement it. So Sidekick is a hardware wallet for the masses, just like Monoruyo is a Monero wallet for the masses. So with that idea moving on, we said, okay, we want to provide an alternative to standard hardware wallets for normal people to use. Um, it was very important to me to make it in such a way that it's not only bound to Monoruyo, but so that anyone can use it, so any client can integrate to it. <coughs> and that's why it's implemented in the Monero core code. So one of the follow-up things that we'll be doing is uh, making a, a pull request for that. Cloud needs to be cleaned, of course, reviewed and all that, that kind of stuff. We finished it yesterday at two, <laughs> and at three, we bought a cap with Sidekick, so it works. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is just a, a screenshot of the Wallet 2 API where we've added the device Sidekick number three next to uh, Ledger and Treasure, which you all know. But why did we do it? As I said, we want it for the masses. Why do we need, why don't people go out and buy Ledgers, for example? Well. Um, I you have much better answers than me for, for this question. Our answer is it's super difficult for a lot of people to actually get hardware, especially over the internet with, cust with customs, with customs which then know that you have such a device. Why do you have such a device? It's forbidden probably, or maybe uh, in your jurisdiction. The companies know that you have this, you've got a target on your back. We've had uh, leaks of people's home addresses six years ago where they had a reason for buying a hardware wallet. How much is that worth today? So like the, the, <clears throat> the target on your back is getting bigger and bigger every day, thankfully. Um, yeah, so the privacy issues and we're Android people, so we said that actually Android is a, is a good choice for making this hardware. Again, not a dedicated hardware, but an off-the-shelf Android device, which you have lying around, maybe in your box of cables, like in the, in the very first slide. I have at least, I don't know, three lying around. Now I have a purpose for them, for testing Sidekick. <laughs> <clears throat> So it's based on the Ledger workflow. We were we integrated uh, Ledger a long time ago into Monoruyo, and uh, Ledger the work, Ledger workflow is very well documented. The code is on the Monero specific code is on GitHub is also fairly well documented. The code is nice and legible, so it's it's super simple to understand how it works, especially in combination with how the Monero code works, which uh, which is also pretty straightforward. What we use is uh, and, uh, with, uh, Bluetooth communication between this um, Sidekick device and your normal client. So Monoruyo and a Sidekick uh, talk over Bluetooth. Bluetooth itself is uh, encrypted and even if it wasn't, the communication itself is, can, be, can be in plain in plain text, basically, or sent to the clear net without any kind of encryption, because no secrets pass between the two devices. So all the secret information, all the secret keys, all the secret calculations, all the calculations would have secrets as outputs stay on the Sidekick device and are referenced by, by some kind of ID. And the whole thing is implemented as a subclass of a hardware device which, um, which basically ensures that it has the same API as any other hardware wallet, or even the software wallet is implemented in such a way. So when you start 
Monero, uh, Monero client on your on your PC, it uses the same API to talk to its software counterparts. So this gives us the the opportunity to say, okay, you can use this. Anyone can use this. You can implement it in the Monero uh, GUI client and any other Cake wallet, for example, any other wallet. And all they need to do is ensure that they can speak this Bluetooth protocol because that's very system specific. So, yeah. Yeah. So, as you see here, this is just a, a couple of functions so that one can get an idea what, what, what goes over the line. So, basically, the things to verify keys and multiply scalars and uh, generate derivations and, and that kind of stuff. On the next slide, we see on the left the, the Sidekick opened wallet. So basically what we do is we generate an absolutely normal Monero wallet, like you saw a new wallet, you get your keys file, and that's the end of the story on that side. But you can make a backup of that uh, wallet, and you can import it into your Monoruyo or your desktop client, and it's basically a normal Monero, Monero wallet. <clears throat> so you open this thing on the, on the Sidekick, and <coughs> you connect your, in this case, Monoruyo over Bluetooth with it. The two devices need to be paired before because that's how Bluetooth works. And then you restore Basically, on the on the right phone, you restore the wallet, which is uh, the Sidekick wallet, just like you would with a ledger. So, if you imagine the left side being a ledger or a treasure, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same process. So, what you have basically on on the right side are uh, are all the transactions, the connection to the internet, the cache file, basically of your transactions, while the keys remain solely on the, on the left side. For now, we are always transferring the view key. They boom, add an option uh, later not to transfer the view key, but I haven't. Personally, I've never heard anyone not doing that because it just takes forever. And maybe that's not the right use case. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think that's that. Uh, a lot of talk has been about threat models and how can this be attacked. And there was a, in the beginning, beginning and probably still there's a lot of backlash about uh, Bluetooth, Evo, and that kind of stuff. Bluetooth is super simple to use. Maybe it's insecure. The way I understand it is that the Bluetooth attack vector is uh, targeting a faulty Bluetooth stack on the phone so that an attacker can get in, become root, and do evil things. <coughs> Um, if that's your threat model, then don't use this. Use a paper wallet. Um, the way that uh, Sidekick is built, it uses the same uh, encryption of the keys as Monoruyo with this crazy pass, which is a, its own topic. But basically, what it uses is signing by the secure element on the on the Android device, where the key is not ac accessible at all, it's inside the device. So what we do is we sign, uh, we 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 create a hash, use or actually a signature of your password that you use for the for the wallet. We create a signature. We hash that signature with the Kryptonite a slow hash function, so that it creates then in the end a two, uh, 56 bit key and that is used as the password for your keys file. So if you don't have a screen grabber to actually see what you're typing and a root on that device so you can actually access the secure element for that particular uh, app, then it's, you would need to use that device and brute force something which is just impossible to brute force. If you can do that, you can. I don't need to do any of this. I can just guess your wallet, basically, right? Um, yes. I think that's it in a nutshell. We have the two APKs. So you, you would, if you want to try it out, 
which a couple of people did yesterday. On the left side, you have the Munoruyo QR code. Maybe we should have written down the, where these points. They point to uh, munoruyo.app slash munoruyo.apk. And the last one is to sidekick.apk. Um, yeah, give it a try. Thank you.